What are the most valuable skills and supplies you may need in a barter situation? Hi, I'm Jonathan. And Kyleen Jones, and we are the Provident Preppers. Bartering can be an effective tool to get your needs met when resources are limited. In this video, we'll talk about scenarios where you may want to barter. We'll also talk about the basics of bartering and when you may or may not want to barter. And we'll talk about skills and supplies that you will need to effectively barter. Stay tuned. We hear a lot of chatter from preppers about bartering and how to do it and what to do it with. And so often it's always bartering in an end of the world scenario when the truth is bartering is a really valuable tool, something worth our time to prepare for. To successfully barter during a crisis, you should have already developed a valuable skill set, built your physical resources, and developed important community relationships. We do that by learning and preparing today. So what exactly is bartering? Bartering is an ancient practice of exchanging goods and services to meet needs. The mighty dollar or other form of currency may be the most popular method of transacting business, but is not the only way to do business. Bartering is an exchange of energy or resources. In other words, skills or services or stuff that you have or need. When is bartering useful? Well, I would say it's useful all the time, but it's especially useful when there are economic challenges, different kinds of disasters that have happened, or there's some disruption in the supply chain. It is useful in any kind of situation where the exchange of services or supplies benefits both parties. It just makes sense that it would be safest to barter with trusted friends and neighbors. And you probably don't want to barter with unscrupulous people or people who may be dangerous. And this includes people that are needing addictive substances. Bartering may require you to disclose valuable resources that you have and that could turn you into a target. And bartering finite resources puts you at risk of losing something that you may really wish you had later. The best bartering is no bartering at all. You will be most successful if you carefully plan and prepare for all of your needs in advance to ensure that you are not put into a position where you need to barter in order to have your needs met. Frequently, I will have somebody say, oh, I need to make sure that I have this tequila stored so that I have it to barter when times get really tough. But that's not necessarily the best plan. The best plan is to know and understand your community, your neighbors, what are their wants and their needs. Recently, we had some friends come over and they saw some of the Nutella that we had in our storage. And we learned that their family loves Nutella. Their family also raises pigs, which means that by knowing and understanding that about their family, if we store some extra Nutella, it might translate to future pork for our family. Now, if we don't need to barter, we have plenty of Nutella and our family will eventually eat it. But we don't drink tequila, so that is not something that we should store because we need to store things that our family uses. Let's talk about some of the top bartering skills and goods we think might be useful. All of the skills that you master for personal self-reliance just may be fantastic opportunities to barter services for other things that you might need. We wrote an incredibly comprehensive article on different skills that you should build for your family self-reliance. If you click the card in the corner, it will take you to that. We're not gonna use the time that we have to review all of these, but know that there's everything on the screen and more that could be very valuable skills for you to learn. One of the most important and one that we have tried to ingrain into our children is the ability and the willingness to work hard. We recently survived a 90 day challenge where we lived solely off of our food storage and what we could grow in our garden and what we could barter. And our children quickly learned that they could work for the foods that they were missing. In this case, our children worked to haul hay for our neighbors. They hauled 19,000 pounds of hay over the course of three days. In return for their labor, they were paid with Subway sandwiches one day, then pizza a different day, and finally Chinese food. 
the take home lesson from this is even if you don't have other specific skill sets, the ability to work hard can be bartered and you can get your needs met. We've talked about skills. Now let's move over to the goods or the supplies that are best for bartering. The supplies that you plan on bartering need to meet certain criteria. The first is that there has to be a market demand. That's one of the reasons why we talked about knowing your neighbors. What is the market demand in your neighborhood? If you're my neighbor, you should store chocolate because chocolate is something I never seem to be able to store enough of. And I am willing to trade a lot of my resources to have some chocolate. The items should be practical. A pair of high heeled shoes is not going to be a good barter item in the majority of situations. The best barter items are renewable items that you are able to produce yourself repeatedly. Garden produce, eggs, anything that you can produce over and over again that doesn't deplete your supplies. The bartering items with the highest value are those that meet basic survival needs of water, food, shelter, fuel, and safety. Once those needs are met, then people are interested in items that increase their level of comfort and satisfy other needs. Food is an obvious example of a highly valuable barter item. When we talk about food, it's not just flour and salt. Sweets and chocolate are an important part of meeting the real needs of people and could carry a very high price when it comes to bartering. Cooking supplies may actually be a higher barter ticket item than you might suppose. We have a population of people who don't make a lot of their food at home and from scratch. When suddenly fast food restaurants are closed and they need to cook all of their food at home or from scratch, then suddenly they need all these cooking supplies that they haven't accumulated. The same thing goes for canning supplies. There are hobby canners who regularly will can some of their favorite preserves, but then suddenly find themselves in a position where they need to preserve the harvest and they don't have enough jars and they definitely don't have enough lids and rings and all of the things that it takes to preserve a harvest. So canning supplies could become highly valuable. Toilet paper is a great barter item because most people don't want to be without it. It's interesting to note that even in short term events, you hear that toilet paper is one of the most highly sought after items. So make sure that you have a good supply for your family in addition to a little bit extra to barter. We ended up buying a bunch of toilet paper once that after I used it once decided it really wasn't very good stuff. Crappy if you will. <laughs> and so this is going to be set aside on our shelves and will be available for anyone who wants to come and barter for it. <laughs> so if you want the good stuff, you have to store it yourself. <laughs> and in addition to toilet paper, sanitation items may be really good barter items. You could even barter clean drinking water. This is something that in some situations will be in short supply. And if you have the ability to produce extra clean water, it will be highly sought after. And in addition to the actual clean drinking water, you have all of the tools and supplies that are needed to be able to create safe drinking water that could be highly valuable. Fire building tools is another thing that will be in great demand. Gardening tools and supplies is another item that will be in high demand and will be very useful. All of the tools and supplies that you need to grow your own food may suddenly become highly valuable in any type of an extended event. Things that you can produce at home are your most valuable barter items because they don't deplete your stores and your supplies. This is something that you are growing and you are producing. You can feed your family and then you have all the excess to be able to barter. We live in a world where almost everything relies on power. Your ability to produce power to benefit yourself and others is a great resource. It's not just bartering the generator, it's bartering the generator's power being able to take that generator to someone's home and give them power for a couple of hours and still being able to retain that valuable resource, which you've expended is some fuel. But the exchange rate for anything that produces power could be very high. Alcohol is used for potable liquid as a preservative and as a fuel. Therefore, alcohol is a valuable barter item, including distillation tools and supplies. The ability to communicate is also essential. Both receiving information and two-way communication will be critical in most situations. And so not only are you thinking about bartering with the devices, but bartering with the communication service itself. 
being able to send information for people or receive information. Medical supplies can also be a really good barter item. Make sure that you focus on your needs or the medications that your family might need in a disaster situation, and then you can barter with the excess. You just can't have too many first aid supplies when it comes to preparing your family stores. First aid supplies could become a very good barter item depending on the situation, including reference books, medical reference books, which might be really important. And medicinal herbs, the power to grow and produce your own medicine, that's that renewable resource that we talked about. This is the category where we lump weapons, ammunition, and all sorts of survival tools together. In some situations, this could be a fantastic barter item, but the truth is, most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to keep those items and barter with something else. Depending on the situation, camping equipment may be in high demand. And yet it's another thing that you might just be better off saving for yourself. Most basic foods cannot be consumed without cooking. Therefore, power outage cooking devices become really important. This is a Kelly kettle. In the photo on the left, I'm using the Kelly kettle to boil some water, just using little sticks and twigs that are out on the ground when we're camping. And the photo on the right, I'm actually using the base of the Kelly kettle to boil water inside using alcohol. So it's a very versatile tool. There are a lot of different alternative cooking devices that you can choose from, but a lot of these, again, you're gonna to wanna to hold on to, and you're not gonna to wanna to barter, but they may be a very valuable barter item if you have overage. The same goes for fuel and equipment to be used for heating purposes. In this case, we have the Heat Pal 5100 on the table providing heat for the family. And that uses denatured alcohol, which is a great emergency storage fuel. And of course, fuel is always something that is needed. And again, you may or may not want to barter that away. Some of these are finite resources that would be hard to replace. If you're looking at a short-term crisis, like post-earthquake or post-hurricane, then you know how much fuel you have and probably how much fuel you're going to need for the duration of that event. Then you're able to barter some of the fuel that you have if you have excess. Now clothing for the most part is not a highly valuable barter item because the majority of people have way more clothes than what they actually need. However, children's clothing because of their ability to rapidly change size has more value. Shoe repair items like shoe goo and clothing repair items would be very valuable and, and good barter items. Every time we go into a building, it's usually within a temperature range where we can be comfortable. However, if the power is out and we do not have the ability to heat our home, many people do not have the clothing that they need in order to stay warm in their very own homes. That would make warm clothing a more valuable barter item. Darkness can be dangerous and it can also be a little bit frightening. That is why light becomes another very important barter item and definitely something you want for your home. The lack of abundant quality foods may create vitamin deficiencies very quickly. Therefore, vitamin supplements should be an important part of your storage plan as well as maybe a really valuable resource to barter in some situations. Every parent has a special place in their heart for their children and especially the young children and would do just about anything to take care of them and make sure that their needs are met. The best way to do this is through advanced planning and making sure that you've stocked up. But anything that you have in excess, such as disposable diapers, cloth diapers and plastic pants or diaper pins, all the things that infants and small children need could become very valuable. A good selection of hand tools will be useful in helping to meet your own needs as well as the needs of others. Whether that is in a barter situation where you are doing work for others, or maybe you're just loaning a tool to a neighbor so that they can do meet their needs, and more than likely you'll borrow a tool from them to help meet your needs. Having building materials on hand will also be important in a variety of situations, both to take care of your own needs and to help others. A working vehicle is an important asset in our society today. We personally store everything that we need to keep our vehicles well-maintained and running. In a crisis situation, there will be others who may not have stored what they need who might present us with an opportunity to barter. We have worked hard to build our reference library. We have all sorts of reference books that can show us exactly how to do things when the internet goes down or if Google fails us. And although I probably wouldn't let these go permanently, I sure would be willing to share them 
especially for a little piece of chocolate in return. Sometimes we take our vision for granted, and yet if I've lost my reading glasses, I can't do much. I can't do any detailed work. And there are others in that same situation. So any item that helps you be able to see better or protects your eyes would be a great barter item. Precious metals are usually not considered a barter item. However, in some type of a long-term event, they could be a very valuable form of exchange. What about your pets? In our recent 90-day no shopping challenge, we found ourselves out of cat food. Fortunately, we had some old tuna that the cats are thoroughly enjoying, but it made me realize that I need to do a little better job of stocking up on some animal and pet supplies. Don't underestimate the value and the importance of entertainment. You may be able to barter for your skills if you play a musical instrument or for different supplies that you have that can keep kids active and entertained. Entertainment provides us an opportunity to take a break from whatever the stresses of life may be and laugh and relax, and that is truly valuable. We carefully develop our plan around these beautiful people in this picture because we prepare to meet the needs of our family first. And then if we have extra, then we might be able to barter for something that we didn't think about or that we have run out of. But it's always about family first. And then about thinking about your neighbors and what your neighbors might like so that you can barter for other things should you have the need with them. Your plan needs to understand that you have real people with real needs. Now, Jonathan really can't be considered a real person because he's this tough guy that when we did this 90 day challenge and we couldn't go to the grocery store, he was just fine. Uh, uh I was not just fine and I struggled a lot. We have real people with real needs and we need to plan for that. Don't just put salt and flour in your food storage. If you have somebody that loves chocolate like me, store your chocolate. Store whatever it is that real people need and plan for the addictions in your family. Be prepared to barter and to share. Because in our experience in this 90 day challenge where we did do some bartering to have some of our needs met, we found that it wasn't always an equal exchange. That sometimes others were just blessing our lives because they had the ability to. And we can do the same for them. Because we want to be part of the solution, we need to be able to barter and we also need to be able to share. We are community and our ability to help each other trumps everything. We have written some great resources that we invite you to read. The first is a post at theprovidentprepper.org, A Wise Prepper's Guide to Bartering Skills and Supplies. And that is the post that this video was created from. Also, Skills and Knowledge That Make Preppers Resilient and Self-Reliant. That has the ultimate list of skills that would be a great idea for you and your family to work on. And finally, Raising Confident, Self-Reliant Kid Preppers, 14 Essential Skills. Visit theprovidentprepper.org and learn more about how you and your family can become more self-reliant and ready when disaster strikes. Bartering can be a great resource today, as well as during times that may be a bit more challenging. The key is being prepared with the skills and resources you need to barter effectively. And remember, by carefully planning and building those skills and resources now to meet the needs of your family, means that you won't be depending on bartering to have your needs met. And now for the question of the day. What experience do you have with bartering? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.